All right, folks, season three of Harley Quinn is back. Let's talk about it right now. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel today for another review. And today we're going to be reviewing season three of Harley Quinn returning back to HBO Max July 28th. Now, I think it's very safe to say that Harley Quinn is amongst the best adult animated series, cartoons, whatever you want to call it, available right now. And the fact that it's a, you know, Harley Quinn, which is one of the most popular characters in DC Comics, um, in all of comics and comic book characters, um, you know, I think ever since the, the first season came out, I thought it had a lot of attention, got a lot of momentum in season two. But after watching season three, I think this is easily its best season. And I also think that this is, a, again, amongst the highest and best in animated adult cartoons. I really enjoyed this season. And I only checked out nine, although it's ten, so I still got to wait for the finale. And I had a lot of fun. It was so good up and down the board. Like, so many laughs, so many references, uh, and references to the comments, references to... Uh, pop culture, you know, things you're going to pick up on, you know, little tidbits that you may laugh and some people may may get, may not get, you know, like all those sorts of different things. Like the writing in it is really well. Um, the jokes really landed for me. And then the voice acting, it's just top tier. But beyond that too, you know, very gory. Um, the, the, the series is totally queer um, and, and, and just so much fun, laughs, excitement all over the place. So if you have not checked out the first season, first two seasons, you want to start there because the new premier superhero villain couple, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy are returning back to Gotham, coming off of their Eat, Bang, Kill tour. And now the two of them, they're, they're, they're trying to figure things out. Like I'm calling it what it is. Harley is completely obsessed with Poison Ivy, and Ivy is kind of a little bit reserved. Like, she likes her, but I don't know if she really wants all that stardom and attention that comes with Harley Quinn. As I said, like, Harley is amongst the most popular um, characters in all of comics, but beyond that, she is one of the most popular people in Gotham City. And Ivy, you know, now being attached to her, realizes that, like, there's a whole another set of eyes and attention that comes with that so like yeah you know they're trying to figure that out and whatnot um and, and as i said this 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 series is very queer very gory very funny and all sorts and it's raw and it continues to be raw which i love that because i thought the first season really came out swinging the second season was okay but this season really was the best of both you know uh and, and with that you're so much fun hilarious um, it's just a really good time. Now, talking a little bit more about the dynamic that's going on in this season. Now, Amanda Waller, who we know is part of Suicide Squad, <laughs> actually tried to call Harley, but she wasn't picking up or answering her emails, so whatever. Uh, but the thing about it is that Harley Quinn is trying to do any and everything to impress Ivy. Like, she's just doing a bunch of different things for her to try to stay on her good side and, and and because she loves her and she wants to just you know be that provider and whatnot um but she ends up kidnapping amanda waller <laughs> and that wasn't good because amanda waller then sends the suicide squad after them which ultimately ends up with every bit of green that ivy owns being destroyed so with that you know it's her and frank you know frank that, that's a, that's her that's her person you know but Frank is kidnapped. So now they're in a situation where the two of them have to get Frank back. <laughs> because the ultimate goal was always to turn um, Gotham into Eden. But now she just has to recreate everything because, like, all her plants are dead. You know what I mean? And with that being sort of the mission here, like, the two of them are really still trying to figure each other out. Understanding uh, more about their desires and their and, and the things that you know may make them uncomfortable and sort of what their goals and ambitions going forward. So, sort of a love story in a very wicked way. But beyond that, too, everyone is dating somebody or hooking up with somebody. So there's like relationship stuff happening in all sorts of different corners and whatnot. Now I gotta say, Alan Trudick, who plays uh, voices Joker, also voices. Um, um, uh, and it's a running joke because they always forget his name, Clayface. Um, 
does a fantastic job this season. Oh my God, Joker is so good. And that's not to take away from anybody else uh, voicing, but I just really, really enjoyed Alan's work, uh, which I think in voicing Joker, you you know, you automatically have big shoes to fill. And I thought like he really, really, really brought his A game this season. I got to say that. Um, and, and and by the way, I really loved him as Arcade in, in Mordok, um, which was on Hulu. And with that, we got King Shark going back home. We have uh, Clayface trying to pursue his acting career. Nightwing, exclamation point. Um, and Batgirl, who's completely obsessed with Harley Quinn. So, like, you got a bunch of different funny, random things happening this season. Bruce Wayne and the trauma of his childhood is all being resurfaced again. And all sorts of just random things happening this season. But it's so much fun. But uh, along with that, like, there's so many different references. And when I say references, like Easter eggs for sure, cameos, pop culture references, but also like callbacks to like original, like, oh, let's just say old school things, old school sitcom series and stuff like that. There's even a nod to the 90s Batman animated series, which I was like, oh, you know, that's always going to get a check in the good box for everybody. Um, a lot of James Gunn in this as well, too. Um, so yeah, you know, look, this is easily one of my favorite seasons. You know, everybody's having relationship issues. Um, episode five, which is completely ridiculous. Uh, and, and it's just a really good time. I think it's everything that you expect for this series to be in coming back for season three, but even better. It really delivered. It was so much fun. So much laughs. Um, just complete ridiculousness. Um, and just like I said, tidbits left and right that you just chuckle at or you bust out loud because you're like, ha, I know what you did there. Um, so, you know, I don't know what else to give you, but hey, you need to check this out. When it's returning July uh, 28th, HBO Max, I still have one more episode to check out myself, but I did check out nine and I had a really good time. So to the point that I am anticipating the finale to watch it with all of you all. But yeah, if you have not checked out the first two seasons, you might want to do that right now because it is worth it. Um, and man, give me more Harley Quinn because this is, again, one of the best adult animated series out there. So yes, you make sure you, you do your due diligence. Stop what you're doing in July 28th. Check this out. And when you're done, come back here, jump in the comments. Let me know your thoughts about it. And as always, stay tuned for more reviews very soon.